Hello and welcome to today's Euronet Plus debate. During the lockdown, we're talking to politicians, journalists, and citizens about all the really important issues during the coronavirus outbreak. And this week, we're talking about COVID-19's effect on culture and the arts. My name is Dave Keating, and today I'm joined by the chair of the European Parliament's Culture Committee, German MEP Zabine Verheyen, uh, she's from the center-right European People's Party. Welcome. And then we're also joined by German MEP Niklas Ninas from the Green Party, who is also on the Culture Committee. Hello, everyone. And finally, we're joined by Andre Wilkins, director of the European Cultural Foundation, which promotes culture across Europe. Welcome, Andre. Hello. So the effect of the COVID-19 crisis has been quite severe on the arts for obvious reasons. You can see why uh, we're having uh, theaters closed, movie theaters, regular theaters, museums are closed, cultural spaces are closed, and that means that artists are out of work, uh, which is really coming into increasing focus this week around the world, because uh, even countries that don't have strong lockdowns are being affected by this, uh, because even countries that don't have stay at home orders have closure orders on large gatherings. And that includes, of course, theaters where artists perform. They also include museums where people come to look at art. And so we're seeing a lot of artists right now stuck at home. They're just waiting for this to end. They are having not very much support. And a lot of them are really both quite bored, but also very scared about their economic situation. Because of course, a lot of them are in a very precarious situation. According to Eurostat, uh, the EU statistical agency, uh, this COVID crisis will affect 7.3 million jobs in the cultural sphere. And over 30% of those people are self-employed. Uh, now, yesterday, France announced new financial aid for the art and culture sector and a 12-month extension to France's special unemployment benefits for actors, performers, musicians, and technicians. Now, that's normally meant to protect them during the downtime between gigs, but now it would be extended for as long as the cultural spaces are closed. At the EU level, the European Commission this week launched a portal called creativesunite.eu to help artists find ways to make money despite the closures. It was in response to calls for action last month from EU culture ministers and the European Parliament's Culture Committee, of which we have two members here today. Uh, so let's start with Andre, because you're in regular contact with these artists across Europe. How are you, what are you hearing from artists across Europe in terms of how they're being affected by these coronavirus lockdowns? Mm. Yeah, I think you, you pointed to, uh, to the main uh, issues already. Um, the culture sector is, is a huge sector in Europe, is a, is a, is a vibrant sector. It makes up actually um, for a lot what, what Europe is strong for. It's not only the heritage, but also the creative potential uh, for the future of Europe. And um, you pointed to the, to the many people who are now unemployed. And the biggest issue I see, um, or two big issues I see, is that the culture sector is um, over proportionally dependent on, on self-employed people, which is uh, in many ways um, also its strengths. But in the current crisis, it's, it's a big weakness. And um, how um, self-employed can deal with it who don't have the safety net of a big organization or a big government or, or a big company behind them who can um, for a certain time pay money and, and, and make all sorts of, um, um, of, of arrangements possible. That is a, is a big challenge and that also is a big pressure on the individuals and their families. Um, when they look at the future. So that's, uh, that's a really one, one, one big problem. And of course, as, as government support, you, um, you talked about the French, the, the Germans have put a big program in place, the Nordic countries, um, but um, the, the government support is unequal. Um, so the, the countries most affected often are also the countries with the least um, potential to provide uh, government support. And so that, that is an uh, additional strain uh, when we look at the whole of Europe. 
And then you, you see um, that in the current crisis, the, the national governments provide the most um, support and are the first sort of call while, while Europe is sort of um, um, maybe a second call or a second tier, but there's a lot of uh, cultural mobility and, and cultural cooperation going on. And that is suffering now too. And I, I think there's a big issue that the first ones to bail out are the nations. And, um, and it's not clear who will really bail out uh, the European um, cultural cooperation. Yeah, Sabina, the the EU has some programs to help people generally, particularly the the employment insurance program, sure, which is designed to keep people in employment. But what is the EU doing specifically for artists? Because a lot of them can fall through the cracks here for these programs. Yeah, the Committee on Culture and Education issued a call uh, to the European Commission and the member states to support culture and creative sectors facing the consequences of the pandemic-related lockdowns affecting cinemas, small concert venues, theatres and museums already on the 17th of March, so quite early. Uh, it highlighted the performances made available online for free by individuals and small business whose economic survival is in question. On the 27th of March, uh, we again stress the imperative for businesses and individuals in the cultural and creative sector to have access to the financial support from the CR2 uh, adopted by uh, the European Parliament during its extraordinary session the previous day. Uh, the committee pressed the Commission to mobilize additional sources of funding among the existing programs to complement the considerable efforts at national level. Level. The committee is also of the opinion that the EU support can most useful be delivered through access to uh, bridging loans and to other finances and propose three basic options. Uh, first, the culture and creative sectors guarantee facility under the Creative Europe is a relatively new instrument operating since June 2016 and tailored to the needs of CCS SMEs and the program as such does not offer sufficient solutions as it has a tiny part, just 0.14% uh, of the EU funds at its disposal. But the guarantee can help address the cash flow problems of small creative companies. Uh, the facility managed by the European Investment Fund has been moved to a new program, the InvestEU, for the next multi-annual uh, financial framework, 21, 20 to 27, still uh, under discussion. Um, we need this facility and we need it in a stronger way. Uh, so uh, it's very important and that is what we fight for that we get also for the um, uh, coming back of the cultural sector after the, the lockdowns uh, in the uh, COVID-19 crisis. We need more money, spe especially in the Creative Euro programs to support uh, uh, clearly the sector. In our point of view, an extension of the existing program seems inviteable. Uh, we suggest two ways of topping it up. Uh, direct increase of the Creative Europe budget or additional funding through the European Fund for Strategic Investment, the FC. Um, it, should be, uh, it was put on, in, uh, in place in 2014 as the Juncker's investment plan for Europe. But however, more money for the current Creative Europe program is unlikely to yield enough additional funding to cope with the current huge difficulties. Moreover, the discussion on its future budget has been deadlocked since December 2019 uh, due to the council uh, opposition. So it's very important that the cultural and creative sector can uh, participate in the other programs. If it is the social fund, if it is the uh, regional development funds, the funds that are available at the moment must uh, get uh, specific parts uh, for the creative sector because very often the creative sector doesn't fit uh, to the uh, regulations in these programs. Concerning well, the... the I was yes. just going to say, you note that there, there are a lot of EU funds available uh, in normal times. What about the possible future funds? Nicholas, let's turn to you. In, right now, the, the big hot topic in Brussels is this recovery fund, uh, <clears throat> this idea for really this bazooka of cash to help the EU weather the economic storm to come. Uh, is any of that funding right now that's still being created, but are people talking about ring fencing any of that funding specifically for the arts? Uh, and if so, how could that look like? 
Well, obviously, as you already said, the the fun the the recovery plan itself is not yet there. So we expect it for next week, and um, we will discuss the details then. However, obviously, different committees are already promoting different uh, points that they want to see included and in different areas that they think um, are affected the most. For example, um, I also am in the uh, Region Development Committee and there we already issued the, the problem and we focus a lot, or the other members as well, focus a lot, for example, on tourism, which is affected by Corona crisis a lot. Um, however, I brought up the point also to talk about culture because you, you see, we have the structural funds, which are way bigger than, than those we have in, in the Creative Europe, for example. Um, and they are meant to increase the structure, the overall structure, which also includes infrastructure for culture. And the Court of Audit has already stated in a press release, um, uh, I think a week ago or two, um, that the regional, uh, regional funds have not uh, been sufficiently used to enable cultural infrastructure. And uh, this is alarming, I believe. And so I want to make sure that we use all these different funds to really support um, the creators. For example, um, when, we, when we talk about, and I think we have, the sector is so broad that we have to find different ways to help sufficiently because the Creative Europe um, program, as Sabine already said, is quite uh, tight and it's it's very uh, limited. And therefore, we do good in using other funds as well. So when we talk, for example, about venues, stages, theaters, and so on, the building themselves, they can be supported by the recovery fund, and they can be supported by the structural funds, and they should, because then we have more money left from Creative Europe to support um, the artists, the people themselves, and also they need stages, they need venues to perform. And if they don't survive the venues, then the future of performance will be limited. And that's why we need to really figure out different paths to support the creative um, and cultural sector overall, and not just go with like, we have one package that will solve all the issues. This is not gonna happen and we need different approaches from different areas. Audrey, let's, I mean, obviously we all want to support our favorite artists, our favorite actors, our favorite singers. How can we as citizens help uh, artists through this difficult time? Um, are there digital opportunities for performers to make money? Uh, and what do you make of this new creativesunite.eu portal from the commission? Is that one way that artists can try to get themselves through this? No, I, I, I think that is a very good start. I mean, I, I like the Creative Unite uh, portal. I think it's, uh, it started uh, quite early as, um, as was pointed out. So it uh, was ahead of the curve in many ways. It's a great resource. And I think it is also a great inspiration and it, it needs now proper support and funding and, and not only for the short term, but also for the long term because um, when, when we talk about the crisis, we probably have to think this is not just something which will last another two months or so. Um, that is something which will stay with us. And, and when we talk about um, what can be do done in, in terms of retrofitting and so on, these are also costs involved. But coming to the question of, of the role of digital, of course, in, in many ways, it is, is helping us to get through the crisis. Um, in terms of connection, we have this uh, interview, this, this, this talk now via the internet and, and, and so on. So it makes things possible. How much it generates in money, one, one has to see. There are lots of um, um, examples where it works, but uh, there are also a lot of examples where artists actually generously offer their inspiration and work for free online. Um, also to provide hope um, and inspiration for the people who sit at home and who, who need to use the digital um, space um, for that. So I, I see both sides and I, I see a weakness at the moment actually in the, in the income generating side. But I, I see actually a big um, opportunity there for Europe. I mean, because I'm um, as the director of the European Cultural Foundation, I mean, the key thing which um, uh, drives me is how can the crisis be, be uh, managed by the EU, by Europe in a good way, and how it can actually become 
a European moment. And, and here I'm, I'm not so much looking when people are looking at, at Marshall plan, I'm lo actually looking at the Truman plan. On 9th of May, um, on, on Saturday will be the 70th anniversary and the Schumann plan was about, not primarily about money, it was about pooling resources. And there I see the, the opportunity for Europe to pool resources in a, in a digital public space and, and make it possible for artists to operate and others of course, to operate in a safe European digital space. And that's, I think, would be a great outcome of this crisis if Europe invest, of course, not anymore in coal and steel as it was 70 years ago, but in a safe digital space. This could be a new um, Schumann plan. And of course, artists and not only artists and cultural workers in Europe would greatly benefit from it, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Sabina, what is the cultural landscape going to look like when we come out of this? Because of course we know uh, lockdowns are starting to end right now and people can go back to work and go back to stores, but theaters are not expected to open for some time. Here in Belgium, uh, all cultural events are banned until at least September 1st. Uh, so what are things going to look like in the months and year to come, are, are venues going to have to implement social distancing inside theaters, for instance, separating everyone by, by six seats? How, how is that going to look? I think that uh, it will take some time before we come back to the used normality we had uh, before the COVID-19 uh, virus uh, pandemic. Uh, pandemic. But uh, I think it uh, will, might still take a while uh, to to also to to come to a kind of, of normal normality after COVID, since the return to a normal public life with events such as theatre performance, concerts, cabaret, and the like uh, uh, will unfortunately probably take a few more weeks or months, or even uh, uh, until we have uh, a vaccination or adequate medicine that we can deal with it in a normal way. I would like to appeal to everyone who can afford it. Uh, not to return purchase tickets, buy, buy vouchers for theater performances and concert, support independent artists and creative people, uh, give art as a gift, buy music, consume creativity, but on platforms where you can pay for so that also the artists are paid for this. I think that is very important also in the next year, years that we establish a kind of consum con con consumption of crea creative content online uh, in, an, in an idea of, of a fair share and pay, payment. I think that is also what uh, Andre said, uh, with the safe uh, digital environment, we need also a fair environment where artists and uh, content providers are, are paid in a fair, fair share and that the providers, that the platforms uh, are dealing with those who create the content um, deal in, a, in, a, in an adequate manner. I think we will come back with distance rules um, uh, that's clear, uh, as long as we don't have uh, the adequate uh, medical response. Uh, there will be uh, the physical distancing, uh, one of the most important issues. So going back to cinemas can, for example, be uh, in a way that one row has to be left free or seats in between have to left uh, to be left free or that you have to wear community masks. Uh, I think also outdoor events, uh, uh, keeping up with uh, distance rules may be possible also in a few months or weeks. Um, uh, I see a problem with the very big events, uh, big concerts, sports events and others, uh, where many people come at the same time uh, to, to a place, uh, because there it's nearly impossible to keep up with the distance rules. Uh, so that will take a much longer time uh, um, uh, much longer time uh, in uh, future uh, that that will be uh, will come back to the norm to normality but I think we have to create uh, systems that for example museums that are open in many countries uh, from now on again uh, but also other uh, cultural uh, institutions can reopen again uh, so that people can use it that people use also the time they have being in home office or with not open school or just partly open school to use uh, these uh, places also as additional possibilities uh, for education, for 
uh, spending time in a in a uh, sensible manner. But uh, I think uh, what what will be uh, difficult, and that's the reason why I think uh, the creative sector needs additional support for a longer term than just now for two or three months, um, because the investments they they took in the past or the things they made uh, are calculated on a full house or on a nearly full house on a special uh, number of participants in events in theater uh, uh, performances and so on and that status will not come back as soon as we hope i th I, I, I think so we need uh, additional support also when we reopen theaters again because they cannot work as efficient and as economical strong like they did in the past. Well, final question for Nicholas, and, and that is, uh, what's the risk here? I mean, if many artists have to give up their craft because they can't financially support themselves and they need to go work in a grocery store, or if theaters close, museums close, what's the risk to us as a society? Well, um, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Sabine is so, um, positive or optimistic there because I have to say even if we if we open and reopen with uh, distant measures um, the venues <clears throat> let's say um, in, in September uh, people are still afraid and they they a lot of people will probably because of out of fear of the coronavirus um, will stop going to big events not because they have to but just because they don't like uh, like being in a room full of people um, and until this fear is really gone I think that um, we will see a very struggling cultural sector and the risk for that is I mean um, we also see that um, different nations take different me measures, different member states. For example, in, in Germany, even the lender take different measures and um, where, where our green uh, prime minister introduced a um, 1,180 euro um, income for artists, especially for artists because they, they cannot manage to do. This is very good and other lenders followed and other member states do other things. But you see in different countries, for example, in Hungary, nothing is being done. Nothing is being done to help artists. In fact, only those artists who are, you know, friendly to the government, they get support by being employed into whatever um, constituency and get money uh, from other resources. And that is critical because the arts need to be free and they need to be critical of governments and of the politics that we do and the society that we live in. If we lose those artists and those criticisms, we are on a very slippery slope. And I'm really afraid of that. So we need to make sure, and that is, I think, a challenge for all of Europe to ensure a diversity in culture and, in, and, and to ensure that uh, creators can survive this crisis and also upcoming crisis, because the fact that they are hit so hard is because the situation previously was not so great either. So we need to make sure that the situation increases. And I want to, since uh, Andre already mentioned Schumann and we are all almost celebrating um, Europe's day, uh, I want to, to say a quote by, by Schumann himself, who said, before becoming a economic um, unity and ec economic block, Europe must at its fur core place be a cultural union. And that is so important. We need to make sure that we have cultural diversity, that we have the artists to support that. And therefore, I'm asking not just for um, an increasement of the Creative Europe Fund, which is a great program um, to, 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 to um, network and to, to extend European culture, but we need to think of new ways, also legislative ways, to ensure that, um, that creators and artists all over Europe are ensured in their social rights, in their freedom of expression, because freedom of the expression is something that you need to underline also with money, to be quite honest. You can be free to express yourself, but if you have, don't have the money to produce a film or to produce a, a theater or... Um, to, to, to buy simply the stuff that you need to pay, paint a pay, painting, then in fact, you are not free, you are very limited. And we need to ensure that on a European level that we have a standard for European artists, that they can really do their work and that they can really 
increase our society with with what they do and the criticism that, that, that they have for the society as a whole. Well, the next few months are definitely going to be very crucial to that. I want to thank all three of you so much for joining us today as we figure out how to navigate our way through this crisis. And thank you also to the viewers. If you have a favorite artist or, or singer that you really want to support, uh, try uh, supporting them in the way that Andre said. And also you can check out the creativesunite.eu portal. Uh, thanks again, and we will see you for next week's political debate. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you and bye-bye.